Om Shanti, a very warm welcome to you all and a very Merry Christmas on behalf of myself and Induben. And it's great to have so many people in the auditorium here and also on Zoom and, and the web. And so we're going to make it a very sort of informal, it's going to be a very light-hearted discussion. It's more of a conversation rather than like a lecture. So it was very different and a question I had in my mind is that Often we think Christmas is about family and people and parties and gifts and all of those things. But I was wondering, is Christmas about food or is it about feelings? And so if all the trimmings are taken away, what are we left with? And what is the spirit of Christmas? And so yes, I do believe that everything that's happening in the last few months is there to teach us something yes i think um like everything in life uh, uh, today's topic is so apt yes. the guiding light of god yes. uh, because you know if you, at this time of the year many people get gifts they get presents mm. and they get flat pack furniture and there's one thing i've noticed with all of these gifts there's always instructions <laughs> so if you follow those instructions, you should get to the product. And I think in the same way, I think the, um, some points that you've raised already is like if you strip away everything, what is the essence mm. of, of the spirit? And I think if mm. we can follow those instructions, those spiritual instructions, then we should find the answer. Mm. I mean, I love this idea of talking about God because it's like it's it feels so good to talk about God. Doesn't matter what people believe in. It's so nice to hear what other people's opinions, ideas of God are. You always learn something from that. And how often do we sit and talk about God? You know? I know. I know. Before I I did the Raj Yoga meditation, mm -hmm. I I was searching for God. Yeah. And I read literally every book on every religion and people were recommending this book and that book and I would read it but having read all of those books I still didn't find the answers that I mm. was uh, searching for because um, it was n it was a good good uh, sort of vision of God but it wasn't my kind of God I felt that my God had to be very universal. It had yeah. to be sort of um, very inclusive, not yeah. exclusive. Yeah. But I think <clears throat> what I like about God is that whenever I think of God, there's a few feelings which always come. And one feeling is that God makes me feel very, it's like he's cozy, he's safe. Mm -hmm. he's, he's not only just gentle, but he, you feel safe in God's presence. And it's nowadays since COVID that everybody signs things now, stay safe. You know, we never used to sign things like that, stay safe. And in God's presence, we feel very safe. It doesn't matter what our opinion of God is. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. We, we talk about God as sometimes very in a, a very abstract manner. Yes. So every religion mm. believes or accepts in God. My, mm. my feeling is, well, I really want to know, how do you see God? Not in God in the form of like his personality and why is he a he? Mm. Why, can't, why can't God be a she, hey? God uh, for all those uh, uh, equal opportunities and yeah. uh, feminist groups and et cetera, I would like to ask the question, how do you see God? I mean, you're a female, you're in a... Mm. Uh, you're a sister. I, I'm in a male body. Yeah. I mean, I can, may see God as he, but what yeah. about God as he? But what, how do you see God in his form? I don't see God as a person. So it's not a question of gender for me. And I think more of God in terms of, one is his roles. I think of his role a lot. Mm -hmm. And I like to connect with that role that if I can also, you know, join in and be with him in that particular role. I also think of his responsibilities. And then at the end, I think of relationships. I don't think of relationships with God first. All oh, right. Yeah. I, and I actually, I actually, 
the way I see God is very much like I have to have a relationship. Mm. For me, I, I need to have someone <coughs> in my awareness. <coughs> and for me, I have to say it's all about feelings. Mm. I can't intellectually mm. uh, connect with God. Mm. I have to connect him with my heart and I need to feel. And or I know physically he's, he's not in my heart. Mm. But I definitely feel his presence through feelings. So mm. I, ha I have to have a relationship with him. On When I think of God, then definitely the word light, the image of light, the feeling of light comes to me. I think of God as light. And then I like this, what I often, which happens, I don't know, I don't think I... Um, invoke it it just happens occasionally throughout the day unplanned it's very organic I feel a light near me very mm. near me not far like within hands reach and I feel that light protecting me um, I feel that light stroking me also sometimes I sometimes feel that light. I don't know if this will make sense to people, but I feel that light sometimes massaging me as well. And that gives me a lot of comfort. So it's like I can touch that light. I don't know how that, if that makes sense to people. And it, that light, when I, that presence of that light, which gives me a feeling of being enlightened. Ah, because I, um, I have something very similar to that, is that mm. um, I tend to talk to God with inside. He's like my invisible friend. It's always yeah. with me. Yeah. And, um, and coming back to the point earlier, I do have a relationship. And throughout the day, my relationship uh, varies according to whatever mm. I'm doing. So if I'm working and I happen to be in the building trade. Mm. So I'm talking to my spiritual supreme architect. Yeah. So I'm telling, okay, what, what are your plans for the today? So I, <laughs> I'm, his, I'm his builder, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm gonna construct a world that he wants me to build. Yeah. So, I, so I have that sort of relationship and it's very much like, uh, I don't feel that I have to try. You know, in today's world, you, you people are trying to connect with the internet and you have to put in your username and your password and then you might make a connection. I'm thinking, well, what's my username and password to connect with God? And I think it's just, you know, he's mine and, I, and I'm yours. That's, mm. that's my password. You know, it's interesting what you just said because just half an hour before this program, somebody sent me a question on WhatsApp, they must have, they knew that this program was going to happen. And so the question is, what are the qualities that the soul needs in order to come close to God? This was literally half an hour ago, this question came. What are the qualities needed in order to come close to God? So I'm going to ask you, what qualities do you think we need? I think... I can't tell others how to connect to God, but I can only talk about myself. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've experienced, I think absolute honesty. Yes, honesty. I, I, I can't pretend to be something or someone that I'm not because mm -hmm. he's not gonna accept me. Mm -hmm. he, so that means I'm honest with my own strengths and weaknesses. And I need to be, first on that respect, I need to be very transparent with him. Mm. And then I think in terms of getting closer still, if I really want to get to, you know, to be seated in mm. his heart, mm. I think it's like I need to accept him unconditionally. I need to have that sort of absolute faith and I must never, ever question. I've never, you know, the interesting thing is I've never, ever questioned God. Mm. You know, it, it, I've always accepted. And I think for me, that comes through, you know, when we talk about a clean and honest heart. For me, it's about absolutely being pure to him. Yes. Not having any adulteration yes. with other people coming in. Because, yeah. uh, you know, there's an expression. Two's you know, company and three's, three's a crowd. crowd. <laughs> yes, I know. So um, I think, um, mm. I think I, 
If I was going to be honest, uh, you could say God is very jealous. Yes, yeah. he doesn't like it when we look at others. No, yeah, <laughs> I think he wants to be the centre of a, a, a attraction. And that's how I like it, because if I not have a good connection a, with him... Not the centre of attraction, but I think the centre of our life. Yeah. Yeah. And when you talk about relationship, then this morning, somebody said to me that um, when she woke up and she went out of the house to come to our morning class, then the whole car was iced up. And then she says to God, well, you didn't tell me this was going to happen. And the way she was telling me, it was so, not just entertaining, but it was very real, her connection with God. She's telling him in a very conversational manner, you didn't tell me this was going to happen. And the next sentence she said was, well, now we'll have to come and we'll have to clean it. Yeah. And just listening to that just brings so much joy that how easily and confidently and, you know, in a very light manner, we have this relationship with God. I think, you know, when, when we have that conversation like mm. this, it's, it's not that I see God up there. Yes. He's higher than me. And I think, yeah. oh, of, of course he is. Yeah. But how else am I going to get close to him yeah. if I'm going to, if I'm always going to keep a distance that yeah. I'm not worthy? Yeah. You know, it's like a child. Uh, mm. Of course, the child will be mischievous, a bit, mm. a little bit naughty, but mm. the, the parents will still mm. seat him on their yeah. on their laps, laps yeah. uh, and they'll still hug him. Mm. And I, that's why I see God. You know, so I so I like that um, conversation that this person had yeah. about the ice. Yeah, I think I think making it real yeah. rather than something like a very distant figure that yeah. I've read in the scriptures. Yeah, but the other thing you said one word which just triggered something in me. The whole concept of God being a guiding light is there in the scriptures, mm -hmm. in the Bible, especially at Christmas. There's that story which you probably know, three kings, and they followed a light mm -hmm. to where Jesus was. They didn't know. They didn't have GPS or an address or anything at that time. But an angel gave them a message, and a light guided them. It was a special light which guided them. And I also, we talk about relationships, but I see God as guiding us. Guiding us in the littlest of things that we do. Like, I've, I might have shared this experience before. Um, once Daddy Janki was very sick and she'd had an operation, and this was in Mount Abu, and it was an appendix operation. She'd had her appendix removed. And I was there in Mount Abu, and so I was asked to take t care of her. And so I was asked to make soup and take soup for her. And <coughs> so I made the soup. That wasn't a problem. And then when I went to the hospital, then I was like, how should I be with her? And I found it very funny that I, did, I was questioning how to be with her when I'd known her for more than 20 years. And I said to God, I said, guide me how to be. And I was so glad I said that, because when I went in the room, she was sitting on a chair next to her hospital bed, and her eyes were closed, and she was just sitting on her own silently. She opened her eyes, acknowledged me with her eyes, not with words. Then she closed her eyes. And then what I did, and it's not something normal or usual. I went and sat on the floor by her feet. And I also didn't say a word. And I just put whatever I bought on the table. And I just sat there. And then after a few minutes, I saw some cream on the table. So I took the cream and started putting it on her feet. And we were sitting in silence for 20 minutes. And I didn't know what to say. And her eyes were closed. but. She also wasn't making conversation. And then after 20 minutes, somebody comes into the room. And they come in, hi, Daddy, how are you? And Daddy was jolted. And she looked at that sister, who she was also very close to. And she goes, is this how you behave? Where's your, you know, like, be silent. Be. And I was so grateful, so grateful, because that would have been me normally. Hi, how are you? And all of that. And so, in many occasions, 
I've said to God, guide me, show me what to do, show me what to say. And this is my relationship. It's not that he's a person, but he does guide. And it's just, just when you said about silence, it reminds me of that, um, <coughs> um, the, um, the silent night. Yes. Yes. Mm. So I think um, silence is very good. I think if, if, you, mm. if we want to come to, come to close, closer to God, I think silence is very important. I do practice a lot of silence uh, during the daytime, especially the morning. I think morning time is really good because um, it is a world that we live in that's so connected with the internet, with mm. social media, and a lot of people just, uh, the first point of connection is their, is their phone. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I tend to switch off the phone uh, uh, at seven o'clock in the evening. I, I, I just put it in a room. I don't actually switch it off as such, but I think I've got to switch off because I wanna, wanna, what I want to do is, I just want to end the day mm. not carrying any burdens of the day, not thinking about it. I just want to switch off. And so when in the morning, when I'm having that sort of one-to-one uh, -one with the almighty authority, this guiding light, yeah. I just want to just sit silent. I, it's not that I'm, I'm just, uh, telling in him all my problems or what I did. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure he, he, he's, he's already aware of what I've done, but yeah. I think it's just about, as you said, it's like you give you example with, with Daddy Janky. It's just you're just appreciating each yes. other's company yes. and just to be in someone's presence mm. that you like. Yes. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to say it's anything. Just a, it's just a feeling of, uh, yeah, mm. yeah, we appreciate each other. Mm. Mm. But the other thing I also feel is that the more I think of God, then what's happening, and you probably have this same experience, when you think of the highest on high, then at the same time, you're emerging your higher self. Mm -hmm. It has to happen like that. There can't be another way. He's the highest on high, and so your highest or your higher being yourself, your higher qualities, Everything comes up. And so then it, it that which connects the highest on high and your higher self. And then you feel so good to connect with that highest on high because it's bringing out the best in you. It's, bringing, it's doing a lot of work at that time. Not only is your higher self coming up, but any negativity is also being erased. Do you experience um, a, a sort of a high point in the day when your connection is really strong? Yeah. Or is it... Uh, Amrit Vela, morning, early morning. Like you said, at that time, it's like nothing can interrupt your connection with God. Yeah. It, nothing can break it. It's, it's sacred, it's precious, it's beautiful. It's everything. It's a foundation. It's so much in that one or two hours. And it just sets the tone for the day. It sets your mood. It sets your progress. It sets everything. Mm -hmm. So it, the highest point is the early morning. So you get a charge? You get a buzz at that time? <laughs> I do get a buzz, yes. Then I feel I'm buzzing. But it's a very gentle buzz. It's a very clean buzz. It's not a, a buzz like where you're feeling frantic or panicking or excited, but you feel this is it. You know, this interesting, that's what you said. That's, that's what I do in the mornings. Like, yeah. I make sure that my mm. very first thought mm. is him in, in my yeah. awareness. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it, sometimes you hear a song or a little tune you hear during the daytime, mm. and, you just, and it suddenly it leaves an imprint on you yeah. and then try as you might you just can't get rid of it yeah it's, it plays it, in it, your head it, it plays in your head so i thought yeah. well i want to make sure that i play the right tune in the morning and yeah. that tune Has is to play all day. mine is one and none other you know yeah. so the first thing i do when i when i get up in the morning is literally mm. say good morning yeah. now I, I i i don't use the word god Mm. I, I think God seems, like, seems very distant to me. Mm. I, just like, you know, independent, you know. Yeah. We know each other, we've known each other for yeah. a long time now. Yeah. But if I 
formally called you by name. So I think we're going to always have a little bit of distance, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so we're not going to we're not going to share our intimate secrets. Yeah. So, if we get to know each other by sort of sort of name that we feel mm. comfortable, and in the same way, I mm. I like to call him Baba. I really mm. do it. I just say, I think that's it. So the first key words is good morning baba those mm. three words then i know that's going to play in my mind and mm. intellect mm. throughout the day then but otherwise if i suddenly think about something else my phone yeah. or or something else mm. then it's going to is this is going to cause me problems and that's mm. why i said uh, the night before will have a strong bearing mm. on the morning after yes so I make sure that at the end of the day, mm. I really want to let go. I don't want to carry anything. Mm. It's all as far as I'm concerned, I'm having a closure. I'm drawing a line. So in the morning, I can have a meaningful relationship with him. Mm. Mm. The other thing that I feel with God is I like to um, look at the way in which he introduces himself the way he speaks about himself. He's so, um, he's not role conscious, but in a way he's very, very aware of his role. And I think when we're aware of our role, then that makes a big difference in our self-respect, in many things. And often I feel that some people are not aware of their role. They see their role in very gross terms. But what is my role? And with Daddy Janki, I always felt this. She was very aware of her role. What is she supposed to be doing? You know, she knew her role so well. And God, he's so, if you listen to the classes that we listen to in the morning, then you will see that he's also very, very aware of what he does, what he's supposed to do, what he doesn't, what he's not supposed to do, what he gets his head into. He doesn't have a head, I think, but this role thing, it really helps me in my um, interactions with people. That I should be, I want to be aware of my role. Not the role physically, but the role in interaction, mm. not that I have to cook and clean and things like that. that is anyway, that's automatic sometimes. But my role in terms of what it is in service, like role is to give happiness. The role is to take away or to alleviate somebody's sorrow. This is what I see as role, that this is God's role also. He's the remover of sorrow and the bestower of happiness. Mm. I like very much that he's so aware of mm. his role, and he tells us, this is my role, this is what I do. I, I really use that role aspect, but mm. I don't have the consciousness I'm having that role. Mm. I, I just use him uh, in various songs. I remember once, um, many, many years ago, mm. I used to pick up these two mothers to, come, to pick them up in the morning uh, to bring to the, to the center, which was the old one uh, on Herbert Avenue in Leicester. Hmm. And uh, I used to go and pick them up around about uh, about quarter to four. And of course, hmm. at that time of the day, hmm. there's not many cars. And hmm. and these mothers, uh, they lived close by. There were three houses that I had to go. And one by one, I would pick them up. And I would never get out of the car. I would hmm. just, I was just, I was just talk to Baba and say, Baba, okay, let the mothers know, um, you know, we're coming. You know, so get them ready. You know, <laughs> we don't want, I don't want to pat the horn. I don't want to get out in the uh, cold uh, car. and everything. Yeah. Anyway, I, on this one particular day, my headlights are on, etc. So I pulled outside of the house. The rule is, if the lights are on, mm. I'll wait. If the lights are off, I know they're not ready because they weren't always ready. Not every mm. day. Mm. So on this, on the first house, mm. I, I, there was no lights. I stopped, mm. and there was no lights. But I noticed behind me that another car had followed me, turned from the main road and followed me, because you do notice these things mm. when there's no other cars on the road. So I said to Baba, I said, OK, the, the Baba, the mother's not ready. What do you want me to do? Yeah. So, so the thought was, let's go to the next one. 
So I went to the next one. It's just round the corner, literally round the corner. But, it, but then you have to reverse back, you see, to get back onto the main road again. So I went to the second house, and the light wasn't on. And this car followed me. And I thought, this is a bit strange. So I was, I'm, over, I'm having this conversation with him. So um, um, there's no light, so I thought, OK, Baba, well, this, the mother's not in. Mm. Well, let's go. Uh, and as I was turning around, this car stopped me. It was a police car. And uh, this police officer got out of the car, and he says, uh, <coughs> in his voice, he, excuse me, sir, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Because it must have been very suspicious, yeah. you know, you're, you're sta you've parked outside of a house and you're, nothing's <laughs> happening and then you move on and, and they're thinking there's some yeah, sus you're suspicious checking it activity. Out. <laughs> and he, and he said, and I, I said openly, honestly, I, I always said, you know, yeah. be open and honest. Um, so I explained to this officer, um, I just come to pick uh, these mothers up and go into a meditation center. I gave the address, everything, yeah. and he listened very politely. And, uh, and he started to, started to interrogate me. Yeah. You know, why am I here? Where are you going? Where do you live? And said, I'm saying, inside my head, I'm having this thought, Baba, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And at just that, that precise moment, this mother walks out of the door <laughs> and heads towards my car. And, and the police officer, um, I think there was a sigh of relief all round, yeah. and I was just saying, Thank you, Baba. Mm. Right, let's go to the next one. Mm. So I think I use, I use him all mm. the time. It's yeah. not that um, it's, mm. it's on those moments when I need his help or mm. when I'm, I'm happy. It's like I'm having a constant conversation. And then later on, I would uh, have a chat with him and says, mm. well, that was entertaining, wasn't it? <laughs> so I, I think, you know, mm. when we connect with him, it mm. is we don't sometimes often realize, but we are connecting it in yeah. many different ways. Yeah. But the other thing is that when we talk about God's light, then sometimes it's not a light, but it's a feeling of love. Mm -hmm. It's not a physical light. It's not a light like this light. But it's a love, and that love does a lot of work. That love is purifying the soul because the soul needs purifying. It's full of rubbish. So it needs that cleansing. And that's how I think when we talk about the guiding light of God, it's actually not a physical light, but it's a love which soothes. It's a love which uplifts as well at the same time. See, if I'm enlightened, then with that enlightenment, I should also feel uplifted. Both should work together, enlightened and uplifted. Enlightened and uplifted. So it's like there is no physical light. There isn't even a subtle light as far as I can see. It's an energy. Mm. It's an energy which works on the soul. It's like the supreme. I like to use this word for God, supreme. I like to use the highest, supreme, beyond. I love using these words. And that's how I see him, beyond and purifier. That's what I said to you. For me, it's the role that comes first, and then the responsibilities and relationships. And so that's how I communicate with him. I say to him, okay, if you're the supreme, then what are you doing all day? <laughs> so it's like, it is, you said something earlier, entertaining. And I like that even though he's not a person, he's got a multifaceted personality. There's no person, but there's a personality. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That, and I, then you explore all these different personalities, all these different areas of God. And then that makes our effort light and entertaining. It's like you can't get over how fun, how, how much it makes it tickle inside when you have these conversations with God. It creates a little tickle inside me. 
I like, mm. you know, when you talked about the aspect of, mm. that you, you, you feel full, you feel mm. connected. I, mm. um, I have to charge my batteries, uh, you know, for cordless drills and what mm. have you. Mm. And they always have lights on them. They have mm. these uh, bars. Yes. So, so the longer you connect with it, yeah. the more lights show up. And I feel like just like that in the morning, yeah. when I'm connecting with him, I, yeah. I do feel I'm being recharged. Yeah. I, I do feel this light is giving me power. Mm. Uh, I only wish there was a, some sort of indicator where I could know whether I was fully charged or yeah. not. But mm. I, can, I feel that I am, I'm getting this charge. And you know, the, the feeling I get is that I feel very light. Yes. I feel, I feel very, yeah. there's no other thoughts. And I'm thinking, I don't know what it is. I don't have to explain it. Mm. It's rather like, you know, when you drive a car, mm -hmm. um, you know how to drive a car, mm. but you don't have to understand how the engine works. Yeah. You just use it. So as long as you know how to drive a car, the engine will do its work. And in yeah. the same way, when I'm connecting with this light, I, yeah. I do actually see God as, as, as a light. Yeah. So t I mean, this picture is so appropriate. Yeah. So when I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself, I'm seeing myself as he sees me as light. Mm. So it's light connecting with light. Yeah. And through that, I feel that connection. Mm. I feel that guiding light that's filling me with power. Mm. And, and the amazing thing is, you know, when, when I'm connecting with that level, it's like when things come to me, mm. I'm not seeing problems. I'm not yeah. seeing situations. Mm. I'm seeing solutions. Yeah. And, I, and there are times when you have to listen and listen and listen. Mm. But the amazing thing is, like, with that guiding <coughs> light, with mm. God being there with you, you see immense uh, potential, mm. possibilities. It's like nothing is impossible. Mm. You, you have the thought and you do it. Mm. And, I think, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, the power of God is amazing. Mm. Eh? Um. Recently, like two days ago, I was doing meditation and I sit here in this very hall and nowadays because of COVID, there's never anybody else, it's just me. And so it just happened without planning or any thoughts or anything like that. I started to, not aloud, but softly, I started to it's like I'm doing a commentary to myself. And it was such an amazing experience. And it was like within that, it must have been 15 minutes maximum. There was no other thought except what I am saying to myself. I am peaceful. I am pure. And I was enjoying this commentary to myself. But I'm sp not just in my head, but I'm saying it out, yeah? not loudly. And I really liked it. I thought, this is something new. Do a commentary for yourself. And there's nobody else in the hall or whatever. And so I feel newness. Every day I can feel something new about Baba which is gifting to us, not to me, but is gifting it to all of us. Some new, something will come up and make me feel, yes, yes. You know, you feel, yes, you know, I found something. And so, and it's like, that's his way of sustaining mm. the soul. He's taking care of it. He's taking, he's nourishing the soul. He's drawing me towards himself. He's a magnet. That light has a magnetic quality and he pulls me towards himself. I think newness is very important yeah. because in any relationship, yes. if you want to come close to someone, mm. I think there has to be newness. Otherwise, it, it can it gets, get very uh, tedious, very boring. Yeah. And I remember on one occasion, I, I was thinking, I said, look, okay, Baba, you, you are a point of light. Mm. But you don't say to yourself, I'm a point of light. <laughs> you know, he doesn't yeah. say, you know, there he is beyond this uh, corporeal yeah. physical world and says, I'm a point of light, the ocean yeah. of knowledge. 
So I said to him, I says, I want to experience going beyond the consciousness of light, point mm -hmm. of light. So I was, so yes, there's a stage, you know, mm -hmm. you, you prepare yourself. I'm not the body, I'm a point of light. So I said, yeah, okay, I'm a point of light. But then I want to go beyond that. And on this occasion, I needed to experiment. So I said, okay, I'm, I want you to take me beyond. Yeah. I am a point, just the, just light. the, just a, a feeling yeah. of what it is to be that essence yeah. of light. Yes. And, and I thought, wow, that, that was good. <laughs> that was something different. And I think it, uh, to experience this, you have to create some newness. And this is where, um, you know, when we talk about the guiding light of God, he also brings newness into our light. Yes. He gives us different experiences. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are put in a situation. Yes. Uh, and, it, and it gives us a different experience, and we realize, ah, um, I'm learning something more about myself. Because mm -hmm. I often see uh, God as like a mirror. Yeah. And, and I'm seeing myself in this mirror of truth mm -hmm. to where I am today. And mm -hmm. sometimes I don't always see myself mm -hmm. the way he sees me. Mm -hmm. So in a situation, mm -hmm. I see that this is, this is where I am. Yeah. But I also know that I can come to that point. Yeah. So I'm actually exploring and welcoming new ideas, new conversations, mm -hmm. new situations, because it, it, it sort of s gives me a, a stimulating experience. So I, don't, I don't want to become static and rigid and, uh, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think, well, I'm doing all my routine, etc. but there's no, there's no experience, feeling, experience. Yeah. I like what you said earlier you know, there was a desire for a certain experience and then it happened. So I think this question that had been asked before I came here, that what are the qualities that a soul needs to come, to clo to come close to God? And I think, I don't know if you would call this a quality. Desire. The desire, that burning desire that desire leads to realizations. Those realizations will bring me close to God. But it's firstly like you had the desire. You searched for God. So there was a desire. And then it gave you realizations. And those realizations bring you close to God. What you said earlier in answer to that question, you said two things, honesty and purity if I remember correctly. And I also agree with that, that, that truth, love for truth, because God is truth. God is love and God is mercy. In these three things, I have never seen anybody question or debate or not agree with these three. God is truth, God is love, and God is mercy. Forget about name and form and all of those things because they will vary from person to mm. person. But in these three, I've always felt that everyone will agree. I don't know, maybe in the chat we might get people who don't agree. But when I'm thinking about and listening to you, I noticed a desire to want to be close to God and then the realization that come from that because God fulfills our desires, our pure desires. And then when those desires are fulfilled, there's some kind of, there has to be some kind of realization. And that brings us close to God. I think all of us have experienced relationship on, with other uh, beings, human beings, um, whether it's our um, family or friends or husband and wife or children, whatever mm. it may be. And while those relationships have been very good, um, but sometimes in those relationships I've, I've experienced, there's like you've given your heart to someone and then they crush it. <laughs> you know, and then, then, and then you think you've ha you don't want to get into that relationship at all. Mm. So I want to still have a relationship with everyone out there. Mm. But I don't want anybody to hold my heart mm. and then crush it. Yeah. So I thought, you know, the only way I can do that is to give my heart to the one mm. who will always look after 
And that Lukaster. song at Christmas, no, that's <laughs> last year I gave you my heart and the very next day you gave it away. <laughs> that's a very popular I, I, I think that's, song. I think, that's, I think that's by Wham, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think this is when, so I think when we s s absolutely surrender to him, absolutely mm. give him mm. ourselves, mm. and I'm not talking about this physical body, I'm talking about... Mm the whole self just mm. surrendering, yeah. then I know he's going to surrender mm. himself to me. And when my relationship with him is, is good, mm. then I know my relationship with the world out there is going to be good. Yeah. And then no one, yeah. no one is going to have the power yeah. to control how I feel because Did I'm connected to the Did you pick up um, a few days ago the definition of surrender? And it was a very entertaining definition because God was playing with words. Baba was playing with words. So he broke up this word, sir, under. So sir in Hindi is head. And under means under. So we put our sir, our head, under God. And then that is what surrender means. Oh, no, that's good. <laughs> So he plays with words a lot. And like today's topic is the guiding light of God. That light makes us light also. We are already anyway beings of light. Mm -hmm. But God's light makes us feel very light. And the lighter we become, then um, it's like as if life is a dance. We're so light that we just dance through every scene and situation. Nothing feels to be heavy or a burden or a struggle. But his light, God's guiding light, makes us light. How do you know that you're following God's directions? How do I know what? How do you know you're following God's directions? How do I know I'm following yeah, God's if, if, directions? So, so you get, you know, because mm. we all want a feeling that, of course, yeah. Who wouldn't mm. uh, not follow God's directions? But how, how, how would you know that you're okay. following God's directions? One way I know is I don't feel guilty. If I'm following his directions, I feel clean. Mm. And it's like I don't feel uh, guilty, but my conscience doesn't bite. It's when I'm not following what God wants me to do that my conscience bites and it doesn't leave me alone. My conscience talks to me. My con like God's light is a guiding light, our conscience also does the work of guiding us. And so when I don't follow God's guiding light, my conscience, it irritates me. It, just won't go away. It just keeps telling me, you didn't do it, you didn't do it properly, you, didn't, you should have done this, you didn't listen. And so I find that very irritating, that my conscience doesn't shut up. You know? So that's one way how I know about God, uh, if I'm following God's directions or not. And another way is that things don't go smoothly. Extern so internally, Conscious is biting, conscience is biting, and externally, things don't go smoothly. Things don't happen. The magic isn't there. When I follow God's direction, magic. Everything happens by magic. And like I said earlier, the lighter I feel, the dance is happening as well then. Then there's no issues. Interesting, mm. in, in all religions, mm there are directions of God. Yes. I mean, uh, I've I, I read, um, you know, um, the Old Testament, practically the, all of it, and mm. the New Testament, mm. and there are uh, God's commandments. Yes. They're being given to these prophet souls yes. who then uh, Pass it on passing to on to uh, everyone else. Mm. And if it's said that if, if we follow those directions, mm. um, we are under his canopy of protection. Yes. But if we break his then commandments, that, yeah. then, then that goes. And I think for all of us, mm. I think um, we want to follow God's directions, but sometimes there's the, um, 
there's the old world pulling us, mm. which is full of corruption and selfish desire. Oh, I mean, yes. I mean, even in this, even this current uh, lockdown, there's there is so much distraction that's yes. going out there. Yeah. But I think it takes a lot of uh, sort of, mm. I would say, self-discipline yes. to realize that I actually I need to follow the one who mm. is giving me directions for my benefit. Mm. It's not for anyone else. Mm. And, and I do like what you just said, uh, that if I'm feeling light, mm. then my conscience is going to be clear. Mm. I'm not when I'm light, I'm also more loving. Yes. And the way I, you use the word attraction. So f many years ago, f six, seven years ago, I worked out for myself what is, I'm going to use this word now, what is Maya means what is taking me away from God. So I put it into two words, attractions and distractions. So attractions is something that I am drawn towards. And distraction is something that, supposing I'm doing meditation, and somebody comes in the hall and somebody walks past me, I'm distracted. That's also taken my intellect, my thoughts away from God. And my own attractions can also take my thoughts away from God. So I need to decide what is it that taking me, taking my thoughts away from God. And I put it into these two categories, attraction and distraction. <laughs> Actually, that's a, that's a very good uh, thing yeah. you just reminded me of, that sometimes we are distracted. And yeah. I remember when I go into Madhuban, you know, yeah. our, the Brahma Kumari's um, spiritual headquarters. headquarters. Yeah. And often you, ha you, ha you have to s uh, sleep in dormitories. Mm. And everyone has their own sleeping pattern. Yeah. And I tend to sleep early and get up early. But, yeah. but there's always people streaming in. Yeah. And so there's a lot of background noise, and the noise that really sort of, really sort of tests me like is those plastic bags. <laughs> you know, when people are when taking things <laughs> out and then putting it in, and 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 I remember on one occasion, um, it, it was just really going nonstop. Mm -hmm. I had uh, put the duvet over my head, <laughs> so so I so won't be uh, distracted by the light. But then there was the sound, and I was talking with God, I was having this conversation with Baba, I says, um, you know, um, uh, can you... Um, <laughs> Reduce the volume. <laughs> <laughs> tell that soul to sort of, you know, silence the volume. Uh -huh. But, you know, in that situation, I've learned yeah. to go beyond even that distraction. Sound, yeah. And I, I think, as I said earlier on, sometimes mm. we are put in a situation mm. which tests our own uh, sort of, um, mm. our own inner powers. And I think from that, I've realized that whatever's happening out there, I, I can't control. But mm. what's happening in here is my choice. And that, that is, that is the mm. direction that God has given me. He says, if you can remember me mm. in the midst of all that, that chaos, noise, yes. then you are doing something right. And I'm thinking, yeah. great. Well, I think it's also time to check if there are any questions, because we're talking, talking, and I don't know what's happening. If there's any questions in the chat box? Uh, yes, there are a couple of questions that came to us. One is um, in the daily study, because the person who is listening is also practicing Raj Yoga. In the daily study, in one of the classes, it is recommended that take one of the points from a daily study to practice while practicing early morning meditation. But also, uh, on the other hand, there was an, um, on the other session, there was a talk about silence. To come closer to God, you need to practice silence. So what are your views on these two aspects? So do we need to practice silence to go closer to God? Or do we need to take something up uh, to reflect and to practice our daily meditation? Okay, my feeling is that reaching a stage of silence, a state of silence is not easy because the mind is very habituated to a lot of thinking. And even if you're practicing Raj Yoga, 
we are all guilty of overthinking. So the first thing that the person said is they take up one thing. That is very, very necessary. That's very useful. Means have something where at least your thoughts are pure and positive. Then whilst you're having pure and positive thoughts, you come to a point of silence. Silence doesn't just, silence is not the starting point. Silence is something you have to get to. It's a, it's a result, it's a destination. But you need to resolve a lot of stuff in your own mind before you feel at peace, at silence, where there's no questions. Because that silence means there's no questions, there's no complaints, there's no desires, nothing. It's pure silence. It's a very sweet silence. And that silence is golden. I don't know if Paramjit Pai feels the same way, but my thought is do whatever it is you're doing that taking up one aspect and you will come to a point of silence. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's right. I think um, if it works, do it. I mean, some people can practice silence and then mm. pick up a point. Whatever it is, I say to people, you know, if it works, there's no right or wrong way, just do mm. it. But I do find that, that I will take a particular point yeah. in, 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 from the murali and, mm. you know, I'm not, if somebody were to say, well, what was the morally about? I will remember the key points. I'm not, it's not, it's mm. not like a test for me. Um, but once I pick up one point, I, I suddenly, I realize, oh, it links into that point, it links mm. into that. And then suddenly mm. I get all the points coming back. And then after I've gone into the expansion, I'm thinking, well, then what? Mm. So what is the point of all of that? And I'm mm. thinking, yes, I get it now. So when I'm accepted that point, my mind stops thinking. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I like what you said, you know, sometimes e even when we do meditation, we think too much. Yes. I think for me, silence is about an experience mm -hmm. where we're not actually creating that many thoughts. Mm -hmm. I just want to experience, I just enjoy the company. Um, it's that fragrance. Mm -hmm. And just practice it and, and, it, and it just happens and it grows and it grows. I mean, I, I think a, a, I think you, you, you talked a lot um, about Daddy Janky, cause especially because yes. you've been with Daddy Janky yeah. a lot. But having observed many of their daddies, and I've had yeah. the good fortune of, of being with them, uh, I find that some are very knowledgeable, like Daddy mm. Janky. Yeah. She can give very deep explanations. But then she can go into silence, just mm. like that. She can yeah. just go into silence. And then you go to the other extreme, like Daddy Gulzar, Who's silent anyway. Who's silent, but when she makes a point, it is so simple, it so effective, yeah. and I'm thinking, I get it, I get it. Yeah. So just maybe just hang on to that point and then yeah. just accept it, and I'm thinking, yeah. So I think that there are examples for all mm. of us mm. where you can expand, mm. but then just go back to the essence. So mm. I say, you know, if it works, experiment and explore. There's, mm. there's no right or wrong way. With God's light, the other thing that you see or you feel or you experience is a radiance. The radiance of God's each and every quality just shines. It's not a radiance like this type of light radiance, but His qualities contain a radiance. They're so different from our qualities. Because one thing I've noticed is that not until I've not until I've felt my own peace can I connect with the ocean of peace who is God. And so I have this much peace and God has this much peace. But I need this much peace to access that much peace. I need to start with it. I need a little bit of starting. And then I will experience the ocean of peace. And I don't know how to explain it, and one day I will know how to explain it. It's like um, it's vibrations just moving. Vibrations do move. And God's vibrations are 
moving around either soul. Sometimes the rays hit the soul, connect with the soul, God's rays work like an injection. And sometimes it's uh, aura and that aura is getting not bigger and bigger, but that aura is gentle. It's, it's doing its work. And these kind of things tell me about God's light. That it's, because like a candle, the wick, the light is very small, but the flame is huge. Eh? And even that has an aura. A lot of people do candlelight meditation or candlelight dinners or whatever. Every light spreads. Any light, every light, tube light, this whatever light, your torch light, even though the light is so small, but it spreads. Depending on the size of the light, it spreads this much, this much, this much. And so God's light spreads. It moves. It doesn't, it's not just confined to a small space or area. There is a radiance about God's light, which makes us want to follow that light. Harika, are there that, any more questions? Yes, that's really interesting to hear you. I'm sure you really had a very fascinating experiences with God that you're able to share so much. So maybe I think uh, we can have a meditation taster. But before that, there's another question that came to me on um, it is like when you said about God's for when you're following God's directions, mm. is it everything becomes easy and uh, lighter, you feel not guilty. So if the path has obstacles upon obstacles, does that mean it is not God's direction or am I not following it? Can you please explore a bit on this, please? I think when you have obstacles, uh, as long as I follow God's directions, then the obstacles will clear. Uh, mm. it, it's a little bit like those stories you, you hear in, in a lot of scriptures, like the parting of the Red Sea. I think when there are obstacles, if you follow God's directions, those obstacles will be made clear. And obstacles are going to come. It doesn't matter what we do, whether uh, we're by ourselves or others. And, and they come in many different shapes and forms. But one thing I've experienced is that if I'm really totally surrendered to him, then it's his responsibility. As long as I follow his directions to the best of my abilities, to, with that honesty and sincerity, then I know it's his responsibility to remove any obstacles. Because as you said earlier on, it's God's task. Mm. If I'm disobeying God's directions, then I can understand mm. I, uh, why I'm facing. But, but if I'm following God's directions, regardless of what's happening, and this could come through people uh, sowing seeds of doubt, probably... Um, 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 objecting to what I do, all sorts of um, obstacles. But if I have that faith, if I've truly sort of accepted God's directions, then nothing is going to shake me. Those obstacles won't be obstacles. They will be springboards for me to go to a, a sort of a, ne a next level, the level of where I come even closer to him. Yes, that helps that question. How do we get close to God? Um, I don't see them as springboards. I probably use the word for myself as stepping stones. And um, I like Daddy Janki's, how she used to describe it, is that when there's an obstacle, don't bang your head against the obstacle. Don't, you know, beat your head against the obstacle. Go around it. Walk around it. Don't, don't try and overcome the obstacle and if you have courage then you can jump over the obstacle but any path in which you're you want to do a good task you want to do something um, great or something grand there is always obstacles on that path and the obstacles will tell us how far I have moved if I've stopped because of an obstacle and I think, I can't go any further, 
then that tells me that I haven't yet understood myself. I haven't taken God's light to guide me to the destination. I, I see the obstacle bigger than God, larger than God. And so we have a very beautiful song uh, that don't talk to, don't say that to God that I've got so many problems, but say to the problems, I've got God. Mm. And, and so that really helps you with your obstacle. Talk to the obstacle and say, look, God's on my side. I've got God. And so you need to. Uh, that's, that's quite a, an interesting mm. um, answer because that's exactly what's depicted in all the faiths around the world. Yeah. Because one thing you notice is that when you have God on your side, it doesn't matter yeah. how many are on the opposition. Yes. Victory is guaranteed. And I think, yeah. as you say, when you have God, mm. uh, what cannot be achieved? Yeah. So I said in the beginning is that God's presence makes me feel very comfortable, cozy, safe. These things, I feel like I've said this before once, that I use God as a blanket, you know, to make me... Because there's so many, so much happening, negative energies, all sorts of stuff is happening. And so this uh, blanket or cloak, I would use the word cloak, it's like it works as armor for me. Armor is very hard, but a cloak of God's light does the work. <coughs> it does the work of protecting me. And uh, so, Hari Kavin? Um. As we've got time, there's another, the questions are still coming. Is it okay? Can you take one or two questions? Yeah, sure. Yep. Um, so I just need to go through this chat. <laughs> just give me a moment. Um, okay. Uh, what is this time? Because the time is moving so fast, locked down and everything. What is the sign of this time? I think the sign of the time is that it's like we need to pay attention to the self. Um, whatever's going to happen outside, it, it's going to happen. But what's happening inside me is the most important aspect. Um, I've, I've never really looked at time as such. Time is not controlling me. I'm always controlling myself. You know, you look at now, we've passed 21st of December, the days are going to get lighter, three mm. minutes each day. That's going to happen. I can't stop that. But is that going to determine how I feel inside? Mm. So I don't want situations, I don't want other people controlling me on my own personal efforts. I think it's for me to be in control of myself. Because when I'm in control of myself, I know I can be a positive influence on whatever's happening outside. I understand the turmoil that people are experiencing and the, mm. and the ever-increasing chaos in this world. But I also feel we also have a responsibility to ourselves to become very strong because I can only help others if I myself am strong. If I'm affected by situations, then what support can I give to others? So when I have that connection with myself and I have that connection with the divine, mm. then I know I can be a, a positive instrument, a positive change for the world out there. I think these times that we're going through, they are huge. They're hugely significant. It's taking us, it's taking us beyond materialism. It's waking us up in different ways. Everyone's waking up to something different. And that awakening is important. Because when the night finishes, the darkness, the darkness finishes, the light is there. But we have to awaken. So the light is happening. The light is working. The light is doing what it's supposed to do. But if I'm asleep, that light isn't going to impact me, it's not going to do anything for me. And so you, anybody you speak to, anybody you ask, there is an inner awakening. We're being stripped of 
so many things that we were so used to. Like even just today, Christmas Day, we're so used to big lunches and families and all of that. And all of these things, I ask myself, what has COVID taken away from me that wasn't useful anyway? That didn't, it wasn't connected with my self progress. It didn't, it was a frill. And so we've had all those frills. And now COVID is taking away layer by layer what we have been so dependent on. And I think it's going to continue. More layers still need to be removed. And so these are very, very significant times that we're going through. And we're going through it, I'll use the word, in wholesale. It's like nobody is exempt from it, spiritual or not spiritual, doesn't matter. But there's a huge, very, very positive transformation taking place. And in this transformation, people are understanding each other because we're all in the same boat now. In this case of COVID, we've all come into the same boat. Before we were not in the same boat, before you were doing your thing and everyone was, okay, we're all doing our own thing, but we're understanding each other and where each other is coming from. And we're all having similar feelings. We all know that now is the time to become strong, like you said, but at the same time, help others. And that help is happening automatically. I know lots of people who are helping in their own way. And some people are helping um, physically, providing food or whatever. And then there are some of us who are meditating or praying for certain souls who are suffering. And like I have a friend and his father's in ICU. And every day for one minute maximum, I send thoughts of, what thought would I send? I hope he gets better. I hope he gets better. And that's it. This is our help. And so these times, these COVID times, are uniting us big time. And it's necessary. We, we can't walk away from these times. We're all part and parcel of it. We're protecting ourselves. We're helping each other. We're taking God's light. We are awakening. It's a huge awakening that's happened. It's like a rena what is it? renaissance. How do you pronounce it? Renaissance? Renaissance. Yeah. And so it's, it's a big, I, w I don't know if to call it a spiritual renaiss renaissance, but there is something happening. Huge energies are transforming. And I know people are calling it the new norm. But I also know we can't go back to our old way of thinking, our old pattern of thinking. That's what my feelings are. I think that's, that's a very good point. Uh, when, when we fall, we will automatically give mm. a chat. Thank you very much. Uh, there's one last question, but um, now the time is up, but I still would like to read the question, maybe you can answer that in short and take us through the meditation. Um, I felt a very close connection with God after a very traumatic experience. My partner wanted me to go to something which I felt very strongly, but at that time I did not know why or any idea. Um, it, was, uh, it was that I shouldn't go. And things happening that was like stopping us going so how do I resolve this? Now I'm really looking forward to have that experience. Now it's like God is guiding me. So and now I'm feeling bad that I couldn't go. So can you just share anything about this? <laughs> I, I, I think it's, and then uh, take us through uh, the meditation. <laughs> I think what we said uh, in, in our conversation earlier mm. is that... Um, if I'm truly following God's directions, you know, I won't feel any sense of burden, mm. but I will also have the humility to reach out to mm. others as well. Those who perhaps have a misunderstanding or mm. they don't 
accept what I'm doing. Uh, I think um, I think we, if if we, if it feels right, I'm I'm also sharing my own experiences. I would never ever compromise with that, but I would reach out and and have a, a, an open discussion. So I wouldn't ignore the individual. I would mm. need to also say, you know, because because in any relationship there are two sides to the story. And it's important to share openly and honestly with the other individual, so that we so that we understand each other. Apart from God's light, which a lot of us have just experienced recently, or maybe in the last few years, or whatever. Prior to that, and even as we have, even whilst having God's light in our life, there is something called intuition. And the way I would define intuition is tuition means teaching. So internally, you can say conscience or you can say intuition. We feel we have a gut feeling or an intuition and make our decision based on that. And to what extent should I listen to my conscience, my gut feeling, my intuition. And often we see that our first thought is the right thought. So it's like, even if I don't have God's light in my life, I have my intuition, which I can follow. And if my intuition is clean, if my conscience is clean, if there's no selfish desire, then it will also lead me to something, to the right destination. And so your own inner intuition will tell you whether you're, what you're doing is good or not good or what. I wouldn't say the word bad, but it will tell you which way to go. It will direct you. I think that's a good point to uh, end the session. Yes. Um, we'll end the session with some meditation. Mm -hmm. So I would request whatever you're doing uh, is to stop and to let go and just take a very comfortable position sitting down. Put your two feet on the floor. It really helps to sort of flow with the energy. Keep your back upright. And just take a deep breath. And just exhale and breathe very normally. And now draw all your attention to the center of the forehead. Just come into the awareness. I am a point of light, a being of peace. And I am seated on my throne of self-respect And I'm sitting in this inner world of silence. It is just a thought away. A world beyond sound. Actions. And I sit with the one who is ever peaceful. Ever pure. I sit with the one who is the ocean of love. And I am on the shores of the ocean. I experience the waves of the ocean, very soothing, merciful, benevolent. And in this awareness, in his company, I experience the lightness of the self. It is as though my beloved has come to take all my burdens away, who makes me just like himself. 
a being of love, gentle, <coughs> kind. And I remain absorbed in his company. He accepts me as I am. There are no conditions attached. I sit under his canopy of protection, his canopy of blessings. God himself has made me his child. And I am worthy to be his child. And I just sit with Baba, my true friend, my companion. And I cherish this moment of silence. I sit under God's light. Now I come back, once more sitting in the center of this forehead, in my eternal form, my natural form, a peaceful being, a point of light. <coughs> 